Apple iPad, seven years later, that video is coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to the Apple iPad seven years later. Yes, this is the iPad that was released way back in 2010 when Steve Jobs took the stage at WWDC to announce this guy. So this iPad right here these days is a little bit clunky here and this was actually loaned to me by my aunt here based out of California. You can go check her out at Awaken Skincare by Nettie. She's an esthetician specializing in holistic and organic skincare and she's based out of Marina Del Rey. I'll leave her links down below. I just wanted to give her a shout out for letting us use this iPad for this video here. But taking a look at this iPad, this is running a very old version of iOS. We're talking way back in the iOS 5 days. So if I go over here, you can see the old YouTube icon and definitely not the newest looking of the bunch. But, you know, this iPad, surprisingly, this far into the future runs quite well. As you can see, the older iOS was just very nice to look at and it just worked very well. So if I go into settings here on this iPad, I'm going to go and show you the old, you know, look at this old UI, the old icons. It's just, it's very nice to see here. And you go to about and you could see 5.1.1 iOS. This is a 16 gig version here. And you can see the old 30 pin connectors there for the iPad. One speaker grill up at the right side, you see the volume rocker and the mute silence, switch, which they actually removed from the iPad. There's no longer a mute silent switch on iPad. So that's kind of a bummer that we don't have that no more, but it's still nice to see that it's here on this iPad. So I'm sure you can get this iPad for a little under a hundred bucks these days, but back in the day, this had 256 megabytes of RAM and Apple A4 CPU. It weighed 680 grams. And you know, you can look at those specs these days and laugh at them. But back in them days, this was a powerhouse. This thing was really fast and you know, I know we got the iPad Pro here in 2017 that just looks incredibly thin and sleek in comparison, but you know, this is where it evolved from. So this was a necessary step to get to this step. You can't just leap and jump. That's just like of anything in life. You have to start somewhere, you have to grow and you have to evolve and Apple has evolved their iPad product to a level that is, you know, unmatched. You just really no tablet out there that can match the iPad if you're looking for a tablet even and I've tried many different tablets here but taking a look at the performance overall let's go ahead and open up this calendar and you can see a little bit slow animations are not incredible but they're still smooth you know you can still play a game here you're gonna see it's loading up taking its time you can still do some things here so if you're on a budget and you just want to try out an old iPad, you don't really want to buy a new one, you know, I could recommend you try this out if you find this, you know, at a yard sale or you find it on eBay, an extremely low price. But I wouldn't say buy this, like go research and, you know, buy an old iPad, but it's pretty cool to see that it still works. You can see the old keyboard here on the iPad one, pretty cool stuff here. You know, a lot of people did like this older, you know, UI that was from the Scott Forstall days of Apple. It's just pretty cool stuff to see. Now, now, taking a look at the Safari, if we go into the internet, how is web browsing these days on an iPad 1? Well, let's try Apple.com. You know, it's funny because the core experience of the iPad is still very, very similar as it's always been. It hasn't really changed much. The UI looks very different, but what you do on an iPad, it really hasn't changed much. But you see, this website is incredibly slow in comparison to a newer device but you can still do stuff i mean it is a little bit laggy there but you can still do stuff now i think the ipad 2 was leaps and bounds better than this original ipad but it's still cool to look at so this thing weighs 1.5 pounds and in comparison that's still lighter than most laptops so even back in 2010 the ipad was lighter than most laptops so pretty cool to see that now like i say 256 megabytes of ram is going to be multitasking it's very slow but we didn't even have an app switcher back then all we had was this little thing right here this little dock with apps in it we didn't have a full you know card view but you can see this is the old days right here and i think for its time when we first started ipad it did work pretty well we enjoyed this it wasn't too bad they flipped kind of flipped around like so and then if we go and do that again we go into safari and it goes into safari so i mean that that's not bad for being seven years old most android devices would be pretty slow 
back or these days if you tried it out these days so this had a b g n and wi-fi this has a power vr s g x 535 graphics chip so you know th this is the early stages of graphics chips i mean the ipad struggled with games and if you try to load up some new games on this old ipad you're gonna have some issues this had a pixel density of 132 pixels per inch and honestly that's not bad for an ipad it looked pretty good because the screen was well calibrated colors were well balanced ips technology so you can see pretty good you know on the viewing angles so not bad on the viewing angles now this doesn't didn't have laminated glass so the you can definitely see that the screen does sit behind the glass here on the ipad but this was a revolutionary product back in the day and it's still around today and it's it's not the biggest market anymore ipad but it's still doing quite well overall in sales i mean mo the, I the apple ipad business is doing better than most you know phone businesses for some companies so you know you can't say it's something to laugh at here with the ipad business apple's got going so 6600 milliamp hour battery and because these specifications weren't the you know most powerful and stuff like that the iPad's battery life is incredible. This thing can easily go two days, maybe one full day. And this actually still holds a charge quite well, as I have asked. And um, going through, you know, a couple more things I want to talk about. You know, this does have uh, 1024 by 768 display. I talked about 132 pixels. So this is less than, you know, 720. So not, not even a 720p display here. But it was a scratch resistant glass and it did have oleophobic coating, meaning that it didn't pick up so many fingerprint scanners or fingerprint all over the display but overall I just wanted to show you this quick look at the iPad one seven years later like I say it doesn't perform that great doesn't have a fingerprint scanner but this old iOS was designed to run really good on lower end hardware and taking a look at the settings you can see things just kind of still open up here in 2017 so let me go into calendar and I mean I wouldn't say that I would want to sit around and you know browse on this iPad all day but it's going to get the job done if you just need it for one basic task like for example she says she uses this for a cash register and that's just fine i mean we don't need to have an extremely fast product just to use our product as a cash register do we now but anyway that's going to wrap it up here for me of the ipad first generation seven years later like i say follow her her social media links for like letting us use this for this video it, it would be appreciated links are going to be down below in the description of this video and what do you think about the ipad first generation let us know in the comments do you have one still do you did you upgrade to an ipad 2 do you collect one as a collector's item what do you think of this guy right here let's talk about it anyway if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up for me nick here helping you to master your technology i will catch you all in the next one be sure to be well and peace